A new documentary tells a little-known story about one way in which British people helped South Africa's anti-apartheid movement. It's called London Recruits, and it tells the story of the young British activists who travelled undercover to South Africa in the worst years of apartheid to work for the ANC. One of the things they did was to explode leaflet bombs. Now, here's a clip from the trailer of the film of those who witnessed it describing what happened. I saw it. Just happened. Just happened as I was coming out of the office. It blew up. It's maybe 50 feet in the air. And there were leaflets which just, you know, came out just like that. The laughing and gra grabbing as many as they can to take back to the townships. You felt that you must pick it up and hide it somewhere. I think it had a profound effect because it gave a sense to our people that there was a movement and that we've not been totally destroyed. Well, we're joined here in the studio by Ronnie Casserils, who's a, who was South Africa's Minister for Intelligence Services, but uh, an ANC member. But he was behind, he recruited the London recruits. And sitting alongside him is Mary Chamberlain. She's now a historian and novelist, but she was involved as one of the recruits. Good morning to you both. Good morning, thank you. Ronnie Casserils, tell us about the time, what it was, why this was necessary in a way. Exactly, extremely necessary. It's after the well-known Ravonia arrests of Mandela Sisulu, the leadership, and uh, activists in South Africa. So the ANC and its allied movements were virtually crashed. They did not exist. This is in the late 1960s. And I was here in exile. I was asked by the leader of the ANC based in uh, Tanzania, Oliver Tambo, do something about it with the likes of Joe Slovo, who was here, other luminaries. And we had to get the message across. The security police and government were saying the ANC's finished. We're on top. How to then get the message through? And we hit on the idea of recruiting people from the broad-based anti-apartheid movement, workers, trade unionists in the main, young people like that, uh, people from the universities, sent them into South Africa with suitcases, with false bottoms, stuffed with leaflets and devices to explode at busy places, very innocent uh, uh, devices, which blew leaflets into the air to the masses of people who were greatly inspired. Because the whole point was to boost morale and say, look, we've not gone away, the fight goes on. Absolutely, on the head, yeah. Now, Mary Chamberlain, you were one of those who was recruited. Yes. What did you do? Well, I, did, I wasn't involved with the leafleting campaign. I and my then husband, Kerry Harrison, pretended to emigrate to South Africa. So we had something like 22 old-fashioned wooden tea chests, all of which had a false bottom. And in the false bottom, we smuggled in 7,000 pamphlets, which we then had to post and, and distribute out you know, throughout South Africa. So it was, if you like, a big mail drop that we were involved in. And you were able to do? We were able to do because uh, they saw a, you know, a, a, a nice, young, presentable white couple who claimed that they were coming to live in South Africa. So nobody questioned the fact and nobody even noticed in the bonded warehouse the line of nails at the bottom of every <laughs> tea chest. Were you scared? Uh, I was when I saw those lines of nails. 23-year-old <laughs> young lady. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, we, I think that was the point. We were really very young. We were committed to what we were doing. None of us had children. I think what, the moment you have children, you start to worry. We weren't we thought we were invincible. Were you caught? Were you, was it found out what you were? I wasn't caught, although Ronnie has told me now that the Secret Services did have one of those false-bottomed tea chests. But there were three people who were caught. And what happened to them? Um, well, Sean Jose was imprisoned for five years, having been fairly brutally uh, tortured. George Mbaris got 12 years. Uh, Alex Mbaris and Alex, his wife Alex, Mary, Mary Jose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, French couple. So although it's London recruits, we recruited from here, but wonderful metropolitan city, Irish people, Scots, a lot of English, American, Greek and yeah. French and, and the like. And were there many? I mean, you were, you were... Well, in that period, this was a key period, 66 to about 72, 73, I recruited something like 60 
people and sent them in as couples. They didn't know that others were in and we synchronized their actions. So five, six major cities of South Africa at a particular time on a particular day saw five, six of these leaflet bombs and street broadcast uh, devices going off. Mm -hmm. uh, the newspapers were very, very taken up with this, broke a wall of silence and they, it was headline news. So what difference do you think it actually made? Well, Tabo and Becky and the film that we're making, based on a book, The London Recruits, LondonRecruits.com, by the way, um, he has said, and this is a former president of South Africa, that they played an incalculable role in this period where there was just silence and it maintained the presence and the voice of the ANC, it gave people hope. After five, six years into the mid-70s, we were able to reconstruct the organization inside to take over, but quite a number of recruits remained with us and served right through to 1989-1990. So they, they actually played a wonderful role. We used the anti-apartheid movement People of the time, as we well know, uh, from London and elsewhere in the world, were fired by this just mm. cause, which was the cause of apartheid, and were prepared to risk so much. Well, there is, I mean, there's such sort of mixed feelings about going to effectively fight or to campaign in another country for something that isn't necessarily your war. You obviously, Mary Chamberlain, had no doubts about that. Absolutely no doubts at all. And I think you have to remember that our generation, who were born just... <clears throat> during or, or shortly after the Second World War, we grew up in um, a pretty turbulent area. We, 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 you know, we were the inheritors, if you like, of the struggles of the Second World War. We grew up in you know, the depths of anti-colonial struggle. I mean, there was absolutely no question that this was morally wrong. I mean, Do you, you think know, we're a bit soft know. now? Um... Is that there isn't that there are different causes different struggles that are being fought about now and i think uh well, it's the it, confusion it's, in the yeah. world and the terrorism, which this wasn't part of. So the youth of that time and older people as well understood this was a just cause and the internationalism, mm. British internationalism and that elsewhere. They followed that path of assisting people in need, just struggle, moral high ground. Well, London Recruits is going to come out shortly, I understand. Uh, but Ronnie Casserells and Mary Chamberlain, thank you both very much. Thanks for thank having you. us. Thank you.